You know, from time to time on our show, we've used paintings to illustrate stories about Idaho history. Happenings that took place long before the advent of videotape, or even before the first primitive photographs. Only in the imagination of an artist can we find the pictures to portray the history of the mountain man or the heritage of the bow hunter, a legacy that's figured so highly in the traditions of sportsmen today. In the course of searching for these historical portrayals, we found ourselves relying quite heavily on one artist in particular and discovered that not only does he take great pride in accurately depicting Idaho's history, but his talents range far beyond. I call myself a journalistic artist, trying to record some of the history. Maybe it's just painting a bird. But that bird may be gone someday. So you know, all of this is all interrelated to my inner feelings of preservation, maintaining the environment, creating something that's beautiful for people want to look at, maybe put in their homes, hopefully. <laughs> or on their hunting licenses. Anyone who's purchased an Idaho archery, muzzleloader, or upland bird stamp is probably familiar with Ralph Harris's work. This past year, more than 32,000 upland bird stamps were sold to hunters and collectors featuring Ralph's classic design of chucker partridges soaring above the spectacular Bruno Ken. The stamps have been one of the major elements of my whole career. It's given me a lot of prestige, a lot of ability to uh, interrelate to the government, Forest Service, the Fish and Game, um, a lot of other avenues that sort of plug in that one doesn't even anticipate. It's doing something for the environment as well as the government, the Fish and Game Department, all that ties in really nicely. Royalties from the sale of prints go to both the artist and to support the upland game bird habitat. But the world of the wildlife artist can be a demanding one. Ralph believes emphatically that every element of his creations be portrayed accurately from the animals themselves to the most minute details of the surrounding environment. Today, He's modifying this design in response to some suggestions from a Yellowstone grizzly bear biologist. Like this, this particular guy right here, he's got to be um, made to look like a smaller, younger bear. So we're going to have to take some of the detail or definition out of the face, make it rounder, make it look a little long, softer. According to the biologist, an adult male bear would not be found within such close proximity to a female with cubs. So Ralph erases a few years on the grizzly with some subtle sweeps of his brush, shortening the nose and blurring the angular face. All of the paintings are like that, I have, especially when you get into wildlife. Everybody, especially biologists or people that are in the know, can nail down problems immediately. And if one's doing that, if you're a, Accepting that discipline, you want to go into that area, you've got to accept that somebody out there is going to say, this isn't right, the paws aren't right, the expression isn't right, the movement isn't right. Here, Ralph is using the word discipline to describe a field of study. But he also uses the same word to characterize the lifestyle of a successful artist. You have to be very dedicated, disciplined, very disciplined. Self-discipline, because you don't have a time schedule to punch in and punch out. That once the thought process happens, you start laying it out. Then it becomes a competition almost, where you want to make it. You have an image back here the way you want it to look, and it never comes out like that. So it's constant fighting with the texture, the composition, the color, all that business. Ralph uses acrylics mixing the various shades and hues from a few primary colors on his palette. More intensity to the Even basic color. black becomes quite Fine, complex. Blue. And then I can balance it to the warm or the cool side in the black. You can make it, see that's, that's kind of a dark blue, black. And then if I add a little bit of red here, I can turn it to the reddish scale, like that. It seems somehow the artist sees our world through totally different eyes. Ralph explains that he breaks down every element in his compositions to rounded shapes, ellipses, circles, and cones. Each has a cool, shaded side opposite a warmer, lighter part. 
And when it comes to feathers and furs, the lifelike quality is the painstaking result of some very specific and delicate techniques. I'll put down a very dark color underneath, and then I'll take that color and put the fur over the top of it, because it has a tendency, if you just try to paint fur, it, it comes out very flat. And so then I will take that and maybe take a lighter color of it, or red, redden it a little bit. And then um, put that over the top, and it has a tendency to give it more volume, more shape to it. The final touches depend on whether the fur is wet in sunlight or in shade. It's a slow, methodical process, and one that requires a tremendous amount of creativity mixed with large measures of patience and precision. It's a hate and love situation constantly. There's a certain phase where it goes through and you just want to go, yuck, I hope nobody walks in to see this because it's such a mess. And uh, you just pray that it, it comes, comes together. Obviously, it has come together over and over again for Ralph. This fourth generation Idahoan grew up in the Wood River Valley. When he's not in his studio, he's either working as a professional ski instructor at Sun Valley or spending time in the outdoors with his camera, shooting the backgrounds featured in his paintings. His art portfolio is a reflection of his life. For years, Ralph Harris has been the artist designing the regular pointers feature in Ski Magazine. And Ketchum's annual Wagon Days Festival, an homage to its mining past, has commissioned Ralph to design prints commemorating the festivities. In these disciplines too, Ralph emphasizes accuracy. This design is based on photographs of downtown Ketchum before the fire of 1896. The buildings on the left side of the street were all lost in the fire. The regular visitors to Ketchum will see some familiar structures on the right. The most recognizable building is the Comstock and Clark building, which was a bank. It later became the Pete Lane building. Pete Lane then developed a ski shop in Sun Valley right after Sun Valley was built. His family were early pioneers here. In addition to the hundreds of hours that go into the actual painting of the composition, it is quite apparent from the detail in Ralph's designs that this artist spends an enormous amount of preliminary time researching his subject matter. The Native American aspects of his archery prints have been discussed in length with members of the Shoshone-Bannock tribes, from the detail in the weaponry to the markings on the Indian ponies. And the Mountain Man era depicted in Ralph's muzzleloader artwork is a result of trips to modern-day trapper rendezvous. This recently released 1995 design features Ralph's childhood friend in full Mountain Man attire posed against the spectacular Boulder Mountains. Each of Ralph's designs is a complete image, a moment frozen in time that begins in the recess of the artist's imagination and magically becomes canvas and color. It's an agonizingly slow process, but one that's creating history, something that will last, something that moves the discriminating viewer. That's when it really gets exciting. Somebody will walk up and just stand there and look at it, look at it. Come over here and look at that, and then they'll look at something else, and they'll stand back, and then they'll call their friends over. Hey, come look at this. This is really something, you know. Look at the color. Then that's when it gets exciting. <laughs>